welcome. As you see, I'm wearing my blue shirt. And as we look at the blue shirt, and the truth behind St. Patrick and his day, St. Patrick's Day. They say, Styly, you're supposed to be wearing green. Really? And where did you learn that? So you know, we're going to put the Bible, we're going to put truth. And the wet cloth series are on these holidays. That, are they biblically true? Are they right? Should Christians do them? How about St. Patrick's Day? That's coming up in March. We have been told that Patrick was a Catholic monk who brought the Trinity doctrine to the people of Ireland. And along the way, he drove all the snakes from the Emerald Isle. He became famous that the Catholic Church made him a saint. None of this is true. Gee, not true, and then Catholic. You notice how those two come together. It would be a red flag, but can we say green or maybe orange? One story has Patrick using a shamrock to teach the people of Ireland about the Holy Trinity. Now take the shamrock, for instance. Some biographers claim, ultimately, that Patrick used the shamrock as an object lesson to teach pagans about the Trinity, that God is one in sense, essence and three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is no evidence, however, of such a claim. Now we're going to learn, as we read further, that there is actually an autobiography about from Patrick. Well, we'll get more into it. So an autobiography is a, a life story written by the person himself. Patrick planted walking sticks in the ground and having it become a rooted tree. I never heard that one before. While we have little of Patrick's history and teaching written by himself, what uh, What's taught about Patrick now didn't surface until about 500 years after his death. Took a little while, I guess. And Patrick couldn't have driven the snakes out of Ireland because there were never any snakes to begin with. Oh! Okay. If that's the case, I'll go to Ireland. <laughs> I don't like snakes. All right, so. Patrick. Patrick's given name was actually Marwine Saka. Saka. I'm going to spell it. M-A-E-W-Y-N. We can't have a Marwine day, can you? And his last name, S-U-C-C-A-T. He took the name Patrick most likely because of the area he was from in Scotland. dun dun dun, dun. Scotland. Yes. Patrick was Scottish and not Irish. <gasps> Lucky the Irish, my friend. He was Scottish. Boy, did we get that one wrong. Yeah, that's right. Scottish, not Irish. From quoting, I, Patrick, had Clonopundus, forgive me for the names, for my father, a deacon, a son of the late Pontius, the Presbyte who dwelt in the village of Bavon, and I was captured. I was almost 16 years of age and taken to Ireland in captivity with many thousand men. William Cathart, D.D., the ancient British and Irish churches, page 127. It should be noted that Patrick's favorite color was actually dun -dun 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 blue. See why I wear my blue shirt? He reportedly wore it all the time. After 1798, the color of green was closely associated with the Roman Catholicism. How many believing saved Christians are going to wear green on St. Patrick's Day, you Catholic? I am a Christian. I'm going to wear green. You're Catholic. And orange with Protestantism, after William of Orange, a Protestant king. So green is associated with Catholic. And I guarantee you, Baptist Christians are going to wear green on March 17th. You don't know. 
You don't know. And yet the law says even if you don't know and you do, you're still guilty. Guilty. Patrick opens his autograph, uh, autobiography, not autograph, St. Patrick's Confession with these opening lines. My name is Patrick. I am a sinner. Wow. A simple country person. And the least of all believers. I am looked down upon by many. I know where he is. My father is Calipornis. Uh, again, forgive me. He was a deacon. His father, Pontus, a priest who lived at Bonavim, B-A-N-N-A-V-E-M, Tabarine, T-A-B-U-R-N-I-A-E. His home was near there, and that is where I was taken prisoner. I was about 16 at age. Patrick's Christian faith meant little to him that changed during his captivity. Patrick had no less of a goal than seeing pagan Ireland converted. The efforts did not sell with Legari, L-O-E-G-A-I-R-E, -E, the pagan king of pagan Ireland. Patrick faced danger and even threats on his life. He took, a, he took to carrying a dagger. Yet, despite these setbacks, Patrick persisted. Evidently, the king converted and was baptized by Patrick, and much of the people of Ireland followed suit. Patrick would come to be known as the Apostle of Ireland. He planted churches, the first one likely in a place called Saul in Northern Ireland, a bit inland from the coast and just below Belfast. Patrick planted more churches as he crisscrossed Ireland. But he didn't plant poles in the ground to make trees. He planted churches. St. Patrick was tremendously affected and saw many pagans turn to put their faith in Christ. Despite how his existing writings testified to how much he missed his homeland, Scotland, he chose to live and serve among the Irish he grew to love. He even suffered imprisonment and persecution in the hands of the Druids. Patrick labored for six years as a slave until he managed to escape back to his native Scotland, 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 in A.D. 376. Far from home. He clung to the religion he had ignored as a teenager. Even though his grandfather had, a, had been a priest, his father a town counselor. Patrick knew not the true God. But forced to tend his master's sheep in Ireland, he spent six years of bondage, mainly in prayer of his own writings. He spent a lot of that time praying to God. Oh, how wonderful, how, how, how vicious, how terrible for this man to be captured and taken to be a slave. And yet he got right. He prayed to God. He sought God. Didn't that man in the Bible that Jesus spoke about tend to the swine? And did he not come to the, he had no food. And he said, you know what? Well, let's just go back to my father's house. Sometimes trials and tribulations and troubles brings us closer to God. It's hard, but it's true. I don't want trials and tribulations. I don't want pain and suffering. After escaping from Ireland, lucky the Irish, my friend, when he went back home to Britain, he began to study the Bible. During the low, long, cold, and long, long, uh, lonely excuse me, nights and days and nights, caring for his master's sheep in the countryside, Marwyn, M-A-E-W-Y-N, began to pray. Soon he had developed a relationship with the triune God of Scripture and was praying nearly a hundred times during the day and night. Hey, I mean, if you're in that much trouble, and you're a slave and all that, and you tend to sheep, there's nothing more. I bet you David spent a lot of time in prayer with those sheep. I bet you David speak to the Lord a lot of times tending those sheep. Uh, he believed he had a calling from God, however, to go back to Ireland to teach God's, God's word to the people there. The Catholic Church. While having an impact in England and later Scotland did not have sufficient foothold in Ireland until the 12th century, they didn't even acknowledge Patrick for about 200 years after his death. It was a Catholic priest, Joycelyn, J-O-C-E-L-Y-N, almost like uh, Myers, <laughs> right in about A.D. 1130, who wrote, mostly most exclusively about patrick 
He ignored much of what was known then about Patrick and inserted a Catholic background into Patrick's story. So a Catholic priest lied around 1130 A.D. about this man named Patrick to make up stories so all the Catholics would love this Irish man who was Scottish, whose name was not Patrick, but uh, again, I can't pronounce it, Marwin. I think the Catholic Church and their priests are founded upon John 8, 44, and read that in the King James Bible. Patrick was connected to what is known as the Celtic Church. And, you know, it's not the Boston Celtics. You know, a basketball team. It's the Celtic Church. It was very opposed to what was taught in the Roman Catholic Church. All right. Patrick never wrote about a connection to Rome or popes or that his authority came from there. So there was never any writings of St. Patrick or Patrick to the Catholic Church. In AD 596, Pope Gregory sent a group of monks to England to try to bring the Celtic Church under the authority of Rome. However, the Celts refused to acknowledge Gregory's authority and rejected the teachings of the Roman Church. Amen. Glory to God. Wish the Mexicans would have done that. Wish the Catholic Americans would have done that. I wish all nations would have done that. In Ireland, the monks found that the Celtic Church permitted their priests to marry. Catholics don't. And Tim, in one of the books of Timothy, First or Second Timothy, Paul writes that there will be a group of people saying forbidding to marry, which is wrong. That's why you got your priests fooling around with altar boys. Let them get married. Let them fool around with their wives. But you won't allow them to have wives. They got to fool around. The nature of man. It becomes a sin, a cover up. Move them somewhere else. They also practice baptism by full immersion in water. This is the Druids. The Catholics spray you. So I guess a, a well known uh, game show would have your Catholics sprayed or neutered or something like that. So they full immersion. That's Bible doctrine. The Celtic Church also rejected the doctrine of Papal infallibility and veneration and transubstantiation and the confessional and mass and relics, worship, image, uh, respect, and the importance of Peter. In other words, they had no authority of the Pope. They had no authority through Peter. They did not have images. They did not have idolatry. They didn't worship Mary as God. They did not have the mess or the mess. And they didn't believe that that wafer and that wine was the true body and blood of Jesus Christ. They said to the Catholic Church, that is junk. That is heresy. That's of the devil. Don't you bring it to our people. Get out of here. If only America did that with Maryland. How there's a Catholic church in almost every city in America. And God bless America. No, the Catholic church you won't. Well, these Druids are better than what America stands. They told the Pope, get out of here. They told the Pope's doctrines, we don't want it. Patrick also rejected the merge into church and state, which is the main teaching of Catholicism. He believed and taught the same as Jesus in John 8, 1836, that God's kingdom is not of this world. You know why there were the crusades? You know why the Catholic Church went into Israel and conquered? You know why the Catholic Church went into world battle? Because they want land, 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 land. And the land is always promised to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the 12 tribes. You got to read your Bible. You got to study your Bible so you don't be ashamed. He believed and taught the same Jesus in John 1836. The Celtic Church had local uh, councils and kept Saturday as a day of rest. Okay, we're going to... This is a Celtic Church. A.C. Flick, The Rise of Medieval Church, pages 236 to 327. In this matter of Saturday, Sabbath rest, Dr. James C. Moffat wrote that they, the Celtic Churches, obeyed the fourth commandment, the Sabbath commandment, Literally on the seventh day of the week, the Church of Scotland 
page 140. Patrick and the Celtic Church observed the other festivals of the eternal, Leviticus 23. Being human beings were mortal, that is, rejected the teachings of the immortal soul and the doctrine of going to heaven or hell. Rejected the Trinity doctrine. I don't know about Patrick with that one, but the Celtic Church. Followed the food laws of the Leviticus 11. So this would be your seventh day of Ventus today. Refused reverence of saints and the worship of Mary. Mary was not God. You didn't pray to Mary and you didn't bow down. So as far as the Druid church, I mean, the Celtic church, there would be no St. Patrick. And yet in the Catholic church, there's a St. Patrick. And believe that only Jesus Christ is the mediator. Leslie Hardich, the Celtic church in Britain, B.G. Wilkinson, true triumphant. These are people who have studied, have acknowledged, have written books that I'm quoting from. Uh, the Celtic Church had long history before the Catholic Church pushed deeper into England, Scotland, and Ireland. Celtic writings speak of individuals coming from Asia Minor who brought with them the doctrines they received from John, Paul, Philip, and other apostles of Jesus Christ. So you know what the Celtics taught that has been doctrine, that has been written down, that is an historical fact? That there were people who, who met John, who met Paul, who met Philip, and they come from the teachings of Jesus Christ. They came into our land, and they brought us the gospel of Jesus Christ. They didn't bring us Mary worship. They didn't bring us the mess. They didn't bring us a pope. These people brought Jesus Christ to us. You couldn't find Jesus Christ unless he was on the dinner plate at the Catholic Church. Oh, me this. Oh, the lie to you us. Let's eat Jesus. Check out Revelation 12. When that dragon, who is the devil, wants to eat that Jewish baby. Male. But we're going to St. Patrick's Day. Uh, so, the Celts, the Celtic writings... Not the basketball team. The Celtic religion writes to us of history that there were people who knew the apostles that came to them. Remember, Paul went out all through Asia, and that went out through all more places. What's the command? Go in all the world and preach the gospel. That's what the Celtics said. Uh, okay. A Catholic father, <clears throat> call no man your <clears throat> father, Bede, B-E-D-E, -E, lived in the mid-700s A.D., who wrote about the Celtic Church. Now, this is the, the Catholic man called father, dressed like mother, that has no children, and wears his fruit of loom tag on the wrong side. This is what he said. They, the Celtic, the Celtic people, they ignorantly refuse to observe our Easter. <gasps> you mean they won't worship Estar? They won't have Easter egg hunts. I know Baptist churches that do it. Or on which Christ was sacrificed. No, he was sacrificed on the Passover. Not Esther, not Ethar, not Roman, Hebrew. Arguing that it should be observed with the Hebrew Passover on the 14th of the moon. Well, if you read the Bible, it said in Acts, I forget which chapter, I don't have my Bible, that Herod celebrated Esther, Esther, the woman with the boobies and the eggs, and Peter celebrated the Passover. In Acts, they are two different celebrations. They are two different. There's a holiday and there's a holy day. There's a, there's a Roman holiday, Esther, and there's a Hebrew holiday, Passover. Catholic Church, you got it wrong. Shut up. Close your traditions. Open your Bible and get right with God or you'll burn in hell. You know how you get a Catholic saved? You get them in the Bible and you get them in church history. You know what the Catholic Church says? Don't read that Bible and don't go in history. You do what we tell you to do. Yes, Simon. Simon says. Simon says. Simon didn't tell you to read your Bible. 
Go to purgatory, burn some candles, and you can get out of 30 years. Oh, wait a minute. Purgatory is closed. Oh, Stalin, stop it. No, I'm not stopping it. That Catholic Church is nonsense. I came out of that. I came out of the Catholic Church and got saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. I didn't eat Jesus. I didn't drink Jesus. I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. I know family members got in that mess, and they're probably in hell today. I have a right to get mad and sin not. The Catholic Church is a mess. They call it a mess. They call it missing. With moss. Because their rock, Peter, is not rowing. My rock is Jesus Christ. St. Patrick's Day is not a biblical holiday or holy day. Chapter and verse on the holiday of St. Patrick's Day, please. Please, just give me a chap book, chapter, and verse. Jesus Christ, blessed hope at gmail.com. Book, chapter, and verse. Now, there are 66 books in the Bible. Don't give me anything else but between Genesis and Revelation. One of the 66 books, or two to, <coughs> two to 66 books, three, all 66, whatever. However much books of the 66 books in the King James Bible, and you give me a chapter and a verse about St. Patrick's Day. Okay? I can find Passover. I can also find Easter. All right? St. Patrick is not a biblical holiday or holy day. St. Patrick's Day actually has nothing to do with the historical man Patrick. Oh, that'd be like me going to the store and say, I want chocolate chip cookies, and it, I get a cookie with no chocolate chips. St. Patrick's Day began 1631 as a Catholic feast day. Do you now really think that a Christian, do I even have to ask you, should Christians involved in this, when this is centered around Catholic, the holiday? The man that wears green. But the man in the Bible, the man that loved the Lord, wore blue. Without the shamrocks, without the leprechauns, without the rainbow, without the pot of gold. And then he was Scottish. You've got two St. Patrick's. One guy he says, I'm not a saint, I'm a sinner. Whose name is, let me get it right again. Where is his name? Mawen, forgive me for getting wrong, M-A-E-W-Y-N. He says, I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm going to tell everybody in a land that took me captive, Ireland. Because I came from Scotland. But I'm going to go back to Ireland and preach Jesus and start churches. And then you got the Catholics, St. Patrick's. Let's have a holiday. Let's have green. Let's have rainbows. Let's have pots of gold. Let's have this, this little green guy we can rub and get three wishes. Let's get all kinds of uh, flimsiness. Let's get all festival. Let's get all happy. Let's get all glory. Let's go get in the moon and have green beer. There are two different characters around him this time. One doesn't have a date, but has a name in the Lance Book of Life. The other one has March 17th and is founded upon the Catholic Church. It wasn't until centuries later that it began to be celebration of Irish heritage, a Scottish man, complete with parades, shamrocks, and wearing of green. He wore blue. Leprechauns and pots of gold. Book, chapter, and verse. Famously, the city of Chicago dumps 40 pounds of its top secret dye into the river. What's so top secret? As a taxpayer of the city of Chicago, you should have the right to know what they're dumping into your water. The holiday is certainly not to be used as means for excessive party and celebration, and yet it does. Green bear, my, green beer, Mikey, or however they speak. We now celebrate St. Patrick's Day each year in the anniversary of his death, March 17th. Originally, this was strictly an Irish feast day in the Roman Catholic Church, to commemorate, to commemorate the patron saint of Ireland. Irish, Roman Catholic, Roman Catholic, uh, there it is. This is not the man name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. However, 
Irish immigrants coming to North America, America, brought the tradition with them. It is now widely celebrated each year. It's sadly few people remember the devoted missionary who stands behind the St. Patrick's Day tradition. I honor the man that witnessed. I honor the man that preached. I honor the man that brought Jesus Christ. The man that brought the Chimrash. The one that brought the Catholic. The one that stands. Throw him out there. Throw him into the lake of fire. But, again, Maui, M-A-E-W-Y-N. If his name's in the Lamb's Book of Life, glory to God. He's probably got Irish people there. He's probably got Scottish people. Every year, March 17, millions of people around the world celebrate St. Patrick's Day with parades, parties, and the color green. Where's the Bible? Where's the preaching? There are numbers, countless of symbols associated with St. Patrick's Day today. Color green, leprechauns, pots of gold, corned beef. All of these rose long after St. Patrick died and had nothing to do with the, the courageous missionary. Indeed, most are American additions to the Irish holiday. American addition? Let's see what America has added to the realms of religion. Mormonism has come from upstate New York. The guy who wants to marry all the wives he can in the name of populating planets. Jehovah Witnessum came from America, where we do not honor God as Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ as God. Charismaticism, that religion that came from the fruitful, nutsy state of California, where they got some bad water over there. There is some weirdness coming out of California. Those are just three fruits. Oh, and let's add some more. Some of the traditions that you do on St. Patrick's Day today, which uh, I, I'm done with this study, may have come not from Ireland, not from the Catholic Church. It may have come from America. God is not going to bless America if she continues in her sins. Now, thankfully, we got some people like Patrick or Mawen, M A E W Y N. Again, I apologize. I apologize to this guy for not pronouncing his name right. I apologize before Jesus Christ for not getting the name right. But if his name is in the Lamb's Book of Life, and there are people's names in the Lamb's Book of Life, to, glory to him through the Lord Jesus Christ, praise God. You can take your St. Patrick's Day and you can throw it into the depths of hell. Because that came from the Catholic Church. So, there you go. There's the wet cloth on St. Patrick's Day. Glory to God and the man that was a true witness, a true ambassador of Jesus Christ, and minus the other garbage.